Hey everyone, today I thought we would do a bit of a more lighthearted video. In a recent video, Chantal said that she likes to eat things that are gourmet, which a lot of us found interesting because she tends to only eat fast food or like what we would consider junk food or not really gourmet food. There's been some trends noticing her deleting videos in the past of her talking about her food addiction or binging and then now trying to present herself as like a connoisseur or like an actual foodie when it comes to food and like her reviews. But I feel like if you were to take the things that she says about food whenever she's doing an actual food review and like put it in a blog or transcribe it to an Instagram post like we see a lot of other foodies do, she never really sells the product or the service that she's talking about or describes the food in like an interesting way. So I thought I would pick just a handful of videos where she's trying to describe food or like tell us her opinion as a foodie, see what kind of verbiage she uses, and then maybe see if we can make it better. So the first video we're gonna look at is the challenge she gave herself to eat Tim Hortons all day. Let's try the hash brown here. Very comparable to McDonald's, but they do have a good coffee. That's what they call it. So urban garlic, cream cheese, bacon, and tomatoes. Let's try this. Toasted. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Okay, so she commented on the fact that the coffee was still warm, which kind of speaks to the delivery service as well. And the fact that she was showing a screen recording of herself ordering it from DoorDash is something that we might incorporate. She mentioned the tomato added a veggie factor or element to the sandwich, but I feel like other than that, she was just like stating facts, which I feel like she does in a lot of her videos. She'll just say like, this is orange juice, this is a sandwich. And then I feel like a lot of the times it's just her saying it's good and like waving her fork around. She didn't give us too much to work with, but let's try to zhuzh it up in our best Chantal voice. Hey guys, did you know Tim Hortons was available on DoorDash? That's great for these cold winter mornings here in Canada when you want their warm signature coffee. The hash browns really rival those from McDonald's and their classic urban garlic toasted breakfast sandwich is the perfect yummy way to get all your nutrients for the morning. They even have vegetables. The tomatoes pair perfectly with the bacon and if you've never tried it before, you're gonna get hooked. I don't know why I forgot that she continued to eat in this video. We have pretty good chili. Now they offer it with a bun, but seeing as I'm having a sandwich, which is kind of a weird combo, I know. Peaky bite. <laughs> mm. It's still really good. Very meaty. Beans. I don't see any mushrooms. <laughs> Their sandwiches are still really good. Chili is really good. Again, just saying it's very meaty, saying that there's a lot of meat in the chili, and she just said there's bean. I don't particularly read a lot of foodie or food related blogs, but I feel like they would do more than just say like, this is coffee, there's creamer, it's iced. <laughs> so just off the top of my head, when you're talking about chili, you could talk about how spicy it is. I mean, where I am, we don't put beans in our chili, but she could say that the cheese adds another level of flavor, like describe the cheese, is it sharp? It mixes so well with the chili that it's just like almost buttery the way it's running through. Like, I don't know. I just, she needs a thesaurus. So next we're going to look at some clips from her Hello Fresh Cook and Eat with me. I was considering um, a service where they actually cook your meals and deliver it to you. And the problem with that is this helps me cook for myself. I feel a small sense of accomplishment. Um, as you're putting it all together, you can smell the aroma. It, it, it wets your appetite when you're cooking it and you can smell everything. And, you know, kind of gets you in tune with your kitchen. Um, but also, you know, if you're just putting something in the microwave, it it doesn't wet your, it doesn't wet my appetite. This clip's interesting because I feel like she was using a lot more descriptors than we normally see her use. I've never used HelloFresh, but I wonder if they come with like recipe cards that kind of describe the meal that you're going to cook. And I wonder if that's why she was able to use more verbiage than normal. But it also really sounded like she was trying to sell the product or the service that she was using. When she says you can smell the aroma and the sour cream is creamy or I can't remember exactly what she said. She kept repeating that it would wet your appetite, which I feel like I've never heard her use before. It's very redundant, but it gives us a bit more to work with, so let's see what we can do. Hey guys, today I'm going to be using Hello Fresh. As you're preparing this meal, the fresh, distinctive aroma of bacon and pesto fill the room and immediately wets your appetite. The directions are so easy to follow, getting rid of any fear from cooking a delicious new meal in your kitchen. Be sure to use my code so I get money. All right, next we're gonna look at some clips from her first time trying Jollibee's mukbang. I got a family size because I had a family deal for like 30 something dollars. You get three mango pies, family size spaghetti, and a six piece chicken. So 
Pete's will be able to eat this tonight. It's really sweet, like really sweet. Um, it's a good flavor. The tomato sauce is a good flavor, but it's weird because it's really sweet. I like that. It is good. It is really weird. It's good. It's just really sweet. It tastes like pineapple juice. What can I say? Chicken. <laughs> It's okay. Um, it's good. In this video, again, we see her repeating the phrase, it's good, it's really good. I just feel like that's all she knows how to say almost. Like I said, she keeps foodie in her name. She claims to be a foodie. Whenever you see a video like first time trying XYZ, you think you get a little bit more than like the same phrases repeated over and over again. She did touch on the fact that it was a different flavor and I think she could have expanded upon it. So let's see if we can help her. Hey guys, so it's my first time trying Jolly Bees. It really left a wonderful impression on me. If you're used to the traditional flavors of tomato sauce and looking for something new and interesting, then you have to try their spaghetti. I recommend the family size because for the price and portion, there's so much of this yummy goodness to go around. And trust me, your family and friends are going to want to get a spoon and dig on in, even if you've already eaten through it. This bold, sweet tomato sauce ran through the perfectly cooked spaghetti and complemented the savory meatballs. I also got pineapple juice. It was really tart and refreshing and the perfect pair with this iconic spaghetti recipe. Okay, so we're gonna look at some clips from first time trying the Popeye's chicken sandwich mukbang. All I got was the batter from the chicken, so it's good. But I'm gonna get hate for saying this. Oh. It's not my favorite chicken sandwich out there you want me to rank them for you but it is good it tastes like how I pictured it would taste um it is good the bread is good it is really good it seems like even if she's not impressed with something or doesn't necessarily like it she'll still just say that it's good this is why I feel like it's really transparent when she tries to give this facade or impression that she's this food connoisseur or has this great palette for reviewing like intricate and different foods. I think she just likes to eat and is catering to her addiction and trying to say that she's a foodie. I don't It kind of reminds me of, was it Igor on Ratatouille where he was like, I don't like food, I love it. And if I don't love it, then I don't swallow. Obviously that's really extreme from an uh, animated film. But here we see her thinking that these types of foods are gourmet and everything is good and everything makes her moan and wave her head and hand around. And even if you're reviewing something, it doesn't always have to be positive. There's ways that you can say like with this Popeye's chicken sandwich mukbang, like she wasn't really feeling it. And there's ways that you can talk about and describe things and compare things and give proof and be like, oh, well, you know, last week I reviewed this type of food and this was my reaction. And so in comparison to this, like instead of just stating it's good, there's a lot of batter and just like stating facts about the order. I don't even know if we can improve what she's saying based off this. Hey guys, so today I'm going to try the Popeye's chicken sandwich. Unfortunately, I think this falls a little flat for me. Typically, I would expect Popeye's fried chicken to be juicy and tender on the inside, contrasting perfectly with the peppery fried batter. But every time I take a bite, it's like all I get is batter. It definitely pairs well with their tangy pickles and the spicy sauce that they put on the sandwich as well doesn't overpower it and soaks into the bread really nicely. I know there's a lot of hype around this, but if you want to know my top 10 chicken sandwiches and where this falls near the bottom of the list, go check out my blog. Like that's something she could do. That's something that a lot of like foodies have. It's like blogs. It's the pepperoni is really salty, but it is really, really good. That is good. That's some good garlic toast. It's um, your onion rings are good. So good. That's really good. The seasoning is really good. <laughs> There's so many words out there that she could use to describe the texture of food or how it was prepared or how something was cooked or how certain aspects of the flavors and food interacts with other parts of the meal. She could even talk about the service that she received if it's about a particular restaurant. She says that this is her job and defends it pretty vehemently. So I guess I don't understand why she doesn't put more effort into this if this is something she claims to be passionate about. 
I don't know, maybe she needs to look at some other food bloggers that aren't mukbangers or like I said, get a thesaurus. So I'd like to know what y'all think. Do you think that she's genuinely passionate about food in the way that she thinks this is her job and she wants to place herself as an authority figure to the point where she can intricately review gourmet foods and she just doesn't have the tools to do that in ways that we would see other professional food reviewers or bloggers do? Or do you think that she's just trying to mask her unhealthy relationship with food and kind of use being a foodie and reviewing foods as a way to enable her detrimental relationship with food and just continue eating in an unhealthy way? Personally, I think it's the latter, but even if she is faking it, she could do a better job at faking it. <laughs> That's all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching and wherever you're on the world, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Bye.